Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at basic usage of asynchronous tasks in Android. So um, I left the last application in such a state that um, if you touch four points on the image it then invokes some code that tries to store those points in the database and uh, storing things in a database can potentially take a little bit of time and for that reason what I'd really like to do is um, I'd like to have some kind of dialog box that comes up and says uh, saving points or something like that and um, would then save the points and then the dialog will go away automatically now a naive um, implementation of that would look like this one here. So we're saying here, yeah, create a dialogue. Um, I'm giving it, I've got this um, string that I've got in, um, in the strings XML that just says something like storing data. So I'm just setting the message. I have no title and no buttons on this dialogue, which is what I want. And um, I'm showing the dialogue. I'm storing the points and I'm dismissing it. But in fact, what happens if we run this code is that we never see the dialog. And the reason for that is that um, to show a dialog, it's no good just calling show. You've got to call show and then let the GUI system, the, um, the thread that's running the user interface, process the dialog. And then you've got to do your stuff. And then later on, um, the thread's got to dismiss the dialog. So if you just call show and dismiss in the same method, you're not going to see any dialog because nothing's happening in between here. You need some stuff to happen here in between that actually um, makes the dialog um, display. Now to sort that out, what we need to do is uh, we need to run um, the storing of points here in a asynchronous task. In other words, we need to make it run in a task, a thread that's separate to the main thread and parallel to it. So in this method, we can just show the dialog and then kick off some sort of a synchronous task. And the task will then store the data in the database. And when it's finished, it will then dismiss the dialog itself. And to make that work, we're going to use a task. Uh, we're going to use a class called async task. Now this is a ferocious looking uh, parametrized class um, and the parameters let you pass parameters into your task. They let you your task post um, values to indicate progress which you can um, which you can receive in a method that will update the GUI and you can get a result from your task as well. But in this tutorial I don't want to use any of those so for each of these um, template parameters I'm going to specify void and it has to be void with a capital V because void with a lowercase v um, will be a primitive type and you can't use a primitive type um, in a parameter list uh, for a, a generic par parameterized class like this so the bottom line is just put void for your parameters your parameter types and I'm going to declare a variable here called task and set it equal to a new async task and I'll have the same parameter types here. Um, Java 7 allows you to miss out the second um, recitation of your param parametric types but um, I'm using Java 6 so they have to be repeated here. And then I have two round kind of constructor type brackets and if I were to type this that would look as though I'm just declaring an object of a particular class and setting a variable equal to it in a sort of normal fashion. But that's uh, that's not what I'm doing here because async task is an abstract class. Uh, but what I can do is I can implement the abstract method using a um, anonymous class type syntax. So I get rid of the semicolon there and open a curly parenthesis hit return and Eclipse has put a closing parenthesis in there for me and I'll add the semicolon after that and then I'll click this warning here and go to add unimplemented methods and that will implement my method for me uh, right here so between these brackets 
and now this is a legal declaration. Um, and I, I must return null here because if you've got a, a return type of void like this, you have to return you have to return null. You're not allowed to not have a return statement, so that must be there. And now I'm going to take my store points code and put it in there. Um, and now uh, points. Um, you can't refer to a local variable from within a method of an anonymous class unless it's declared final. So that's what I'll do. My points here, which are actually declared here, I'll make this variable final. And that just means that I can't reassign points to point them at something else. I can't reassign, I can't reassign this local variable, but I don't want to anyway. Um, so that's fine. And the points themselves uh, in the list that this is receiving can of course change so this this won't affect anything and um, now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to right click here and go to source override implement methods and I'm going to override this on post execute method and um, this runs after your task has finished executing so I'm going to just use that as a logical place to dismiss the dialogue so on post execute will run when this code has finished running and I also have to make the alert dialog, dialog final if I want to refer to that within this uh, method of my anonymous uh, kind of inner class um, so I think that looks pretty good now um, because db.storepoints it might take a while to return um, and for that reason it's great to put it in, in a asynchronous task even if you don't want to show a dialog to indicate what's happening but it's also possible that it might return very quickly and usually it probably will so just so that we can definitely see something happening I'm going to put thread.sleep in here for one second and I'm also um, I'm running this code at the moment on my um, I'll just handle the exception here I'm running it on my mobile phone just because my laptop keeps overheating um, with the strain of running an emulator so I thought I'd run it on my phone instead and I've got debug turned on on my phone and my project um, is set to debuggable in the um, application setting of the manifest.xml as I described uh, in a previous tutorial so I can debug it on my phone quite happily if I want to now I'm using this um, this uh, screencast Android screencast thing here that I showed you before and I'm now going to run my um, Actually, let's just uh, let's just put a log dot d in here, and I'll say here I use my usual debug tag because just to prove that this is working, and say let's say points saved, and I want to show you that you can happily get debug output from your phone as long as debugging is switched on on the phone and in your project. And now finally, let's run this. So the uh, actually it's not actually finished yet um, because um, I've defined the task that we want to run but now I actually have to run it by saying task.execute like this and this isn't going to take any parameters because I specified void for all these um, um, parameter types here. So um, this method now, the whole method, um, where are we? This whole thing is going to return basically immediately and this code will meanwhile carry on executing after this method has returned it'll execute in its own thread which is what I want so finally now uh, let's just run this and uh, let me go to my phone in the real world here and unlock it and um, it's installing and you can see on the um, this is the screencast but it's running uh, my application from last time I run it but in just a second we should see it and still installing let's go to DDMS okay so um, and I'm gonna filter the debug yeah the debug outputs filtered on my debug, app, um, my debug tag JWP. I'm just going to clear the um, log cat log there and look at my phone. Whoops, so 
unlock the screen again. So here's my phone and I'm just going to click OK to say yes I want to set my pass points and I'll click four of them and we can see the debug output coming here coming out here in the log cat even though I'm running this on my phone which is very nice and then after I click the fourth one it says storing pass points as you can see and it saves them in the database and you can see points saved coming out here let's just do that once more because it's such fun there we go storing pass points points saved okay so that looks good to me um, and that's it for this tutorial um, so just a very basic asynchronous task and um, we didn't cover these parameters but if you want to run something in the background and most often you just want to run something without really um, having a lot of um, different data being involved you just want to tell it to run and this is the quickest and easiest way to do it so that's it for this tutorial and until next time happy coding